Hi, it's Dwyer, gamblersadvisory.com, DwyerSportsBetting.com. We're in the sports section on Roku. Look us up, Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. You know, I know many people are looking at the heavyweight division right now, and they're looking at Magnomed Abdusalamov. Right, 18 and 0, 18 knockouts. That's a 100% KO ratio. He's 6-3. He's a southpaw. I know many people are excited. I've gotten a lot of emails from people, a lot of messages here on YouTube asking me to talk about his next fight against unbeaten Mike Perez, who's 19 and 0 with 12 knockouts, but who Abdul Salamov is much bigger than, right? Perez, who's also a southpaw, is only six feet tall. Magnamed is 6'3", right? Many people are wondering what's going to happen in this fight. It's a 10-round fight that's taking place in Madison Square Garden in early November. Now, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but I think the public is overestimating Magnomed Abdusalamov, right? I view him as a very limited free swinger. In other words, when I look at his fights, while I see a lot of power, while I see, you know, him knocking out guys with one punch knockout power and turning fights on one punch, I see little else. I see little defense, I see little pacing, I see a guy who's always swinging for the fences, who really, in my opinion, without a knockdown, can't win a fight by decision. In fact, he hasn't won a fight by decision. He's looked winded in fights. He's been on the canvas before. Look at the Jamil McCline fight where he is on the canvas early in that fight before getting off the canvas to stop McCline in the second round. In other words, I don't see really the difference between Magnamed and the tough guy at the local bar who has a punch, right? So I'm a skeptic on unbeaten Magnamed Abdusalamov, right? Put me in the group that views him with suspicion. I believe if he were to hop in the ring with an elite heavyweight, right? Let's say a, uh, certainly a Klitschko, right? A Tyson Fury, a David Hay, an Adlinaire Solis, I would expect him to be thoroughly deconstructed. The only question in the fight, right, would be whether or not he gets lucky with a lucky punch because he does hit hard as his 100% KO ratio attests. Now, Mike Perez is more interesting to me. I'm not sure what to make of Mike Perez. Talk about cherry-picked opponents. Did you know that his last four fights were against guys coming off of a loss? Did you know that his last three fights were against guys coming off of two consecutive losses? Right? This guy, quite frankly, isn't fighting guys on the upswing in their careers. His opponents seem to be carefully picked. Now, I'll say this. This is a common story in boxing. When you see a fighter with cherry-picked opponents like this, I believe it's one of two things. Either the guy is being protected and they're building up his record so that he can get a big payday in a big payday fight. Or, and we've seen the or before, the guy's extremely talented. Think young George Foreman a couple of generations ago. The guy's very talented. They don't want to take the risk and they're deliberately having the guy publicly perhaps not privately in sparring but publicly fight cream puffs 
so that there's more mystery about the guy, and when the guy hops in the ring against elite competition, his handlers know he's ready, but the public might not. Now, I'll concede, Mike Perez looks awfully good on film. I was looking at his fight against Travis Walker. Understand, he's only six feet tall. He's not that big a puncher. This is not Mike Tyson. But yet, he's on his front foot for long stretches of that fight against Travis Walker, right? Literally, he's hunting down a man who's several inches taller than him with a KO punch because he's that confident in his boxing ability. And his boxing ability looks spectacular. He's a tremendous counterpuncher, right? He doesn't really seem to use length. What he uses is timing. So you throw a punch... He comes in with two or three punches, well-placed, right? He's a master technician on film. But again, the real test for technicians comes when they fight elite competition, right? Can you be technical against elite competition, right? Can a guy really be a technician when he's fighting guys who really haven't been doing a good job in the ring? So I see this fight going one of two ways. The play I'm recommending, and I haven't seen the odds, I'm just going off the styles, is I like Mike Perez to win this fight. I think Perez actually has the chance to be an elite fighter, right? I like Mike Perez to win this fight, hedged with Magnamed by KO, right? I believe Magnamed has one of the tougher punches in the heavyweight division, right? If he was better known, quite frankly, I believe he'd be considered one of the hardest punches pound for pound, hardest punchers pound for pound in boxing, right? He has an outsized punch. He just doesn't have, in my opinion, the game to go with it. So either Magnamed lands a haymaker or Magnamed loses badly by decision. The only way I could see Magnamed coming within the area code of a decision here, if the fight does go the distance, is if he drops Perez a few times. Think Peter Quillen against Hassan and Jacob. Otherwise, I'm expecting him to be completely undressed. And keep in mind too, Magnamed doesn't have a lot of experience going into the later rounds. And what do I mean by the later rounds? Understand, Magnomad has never had to start a sixth round in his entire career. This fight is scheduled for 10. So if he doesn't come out the gate fast and catch Perez early, I'm expecting him to be badly out of gas in the second half of this fight. And I'm expecting him to get completely dominated in the second half of this fight. Understand, Perez doesn't really allow you to rest, right? Perez is coming forward. Even though he's the smaller man, he's coming forward and he's literally forcing you to box him. And understand, he is a superior boxer. I'm guessing if he wins this fight, he's going to be in play for the big names in the division, the guys I just mentioned, because he's small. And I believe there seems to be a bias at heavyweight against guys who aren't tall with KO punches, right? If you're shorter and you don't have explosive punching power like Mike Tyson, I believe people underestimate you. Don't make the mistake of underestimating Mike Perez. I'm expecting him to take Magnomed Abdu Salamov to school. The only question is whether Abdu Salamov, who has one punch knockout power and who throws a lot of hooks, wide hooks, but they're landing. The only question is whether Magnomed is able to land one of his wide hooks, especially since Perez relies on head movement and doesn't keep hands up at all times. I like Perez here, hedged with Magnomad by KO. I don't see Magnomad getting a decision against the superior boxer. 
Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. And if you don't know about this fight, you need to find out about it because it's between two unbeaten heavyweights, right? Um, and understand too, heavyweights age slower than other divisions, right? That's why we have a heavyweight champion right now in his late 30s. In fact, we have multiple. Both Klitschko's are over the age of 35, right? It's because heavyweights really don't hit their primes until they're around 34, 35 today, right? Well, don't be turned off by the fact that Magnumet is 32. He's just hitting his prime. So, um, you know, whoever wins this fight, I think, is going to be in a big-time position, right? Because I'm guessing elite fighters are going to view Perez as too slow, excuse me, too small, and they're going to view Magnumet as too limited, right? Just a punch with not much wrapped around it. Let me hear from you. Thanks for stopping by.